Hi, so this idea struck me as a bit of fun with something to do with PC fans. Um, if you're like me, you have a ton of these. So first thing, grab yourself a PC fan. Next thing, grab yourself a bit of clockwork. Now I bought this on eBay for a pound, but you can get them out of children's toys easily enough. Just unscrew the toy and take out the clockwork mechanism. So we need to disassemble the fan and you can do that by flipping it over, removing the label here and you'll see in the centre there there's a little washer. Just prise that washer out. It comes out pretty easily. I'm just using a household dressmaker's pin incidentally. So when you've got that out and it is a little fiddly but you'll get it out, pop it to one side so you don't lose it. If you lose it you'll be annoyed and then slide that out. Now there is a little o-ring in there as well. So be careful not to lose that. We flip that open. The O-ring may or may not fall out. And when you reassemble it, remember it's O-ring first and then little washer next. So there's the O-ring. Now it's, this is the bit that we need to deal with. Now for this particular project, we don't need any of them. So you need to remove them, but they're quite easy to remove. They saw off, trim off or snap off. These ones are going to need sawing off. Okay, so we need something to stick the axle in. So what you need to do is glue a um, circle of something that's got depth to take the axle for the clockwork. I tend to use this stuff. It's builder's board. It's a PU foam coated in um, PVC. It's quite stiff, easy to work. I cut a 20 mil disc and I'm going to glue that onto the top. And um, you don't have to use this. Use anything that will do the same job. But this is really good. Okay, so I've cleaned it up, put a centre mark in, and now I need to drill a 2mm hole in that centre. So there it is. Now a little bit of super glue in there and stick it onto one of the spindles of the clockwork. If you had two of these, I guess you could put one on the other spindle. So that's that bit done. Now we have to make some adaptations to this. Now this was a motor. These coils here are wired up like this. Now in order to get to them we have to pull that off. Now it's a bit stiff but it is just a press fit. So if you get a pair of grips on there, pull that off, you'll be able to reveal the electronics underneath. Okay, so there are the coils and then if we look right there, that's the hole latch. Turn that upside down, you can see the pins. Now it's only two and three we're interested in. So it's, I'll stop moving this around for you. It's that one and that one. If we follow those pins around, we'll be able to see where they connect to V1 and V0. So that one's going up there. There it is. So that's probably V1 or, v, or V2, sorry. There's V1 and V2 we're interested in. So that one goes to there. This one, pin th that one there, goes down to there. So it's that one. So that one and that one are the two that we're interested in. That one is V0, so we ignore it. So you solder one wire to here and one wire to there. And that's it. Now we've done that, put the coils back on, we can put it back together, which is just the reverse of taking it off. So put that back on, slip on the O-ring, and slip on the clip, and you're away. Okay, so here's my little setup. We've got our clockwork motor, it's attached to the generator. I've put a little bridge rectifier made out of N1N34s, and a little LED attached to it. Let's wind it up. I've got my thumb over that cog. Just making sure that it won't move while I wind it. Here's the LED. Okay, not the world's greatest power source, I'll give you that, but a hell of a lot of fun. I actually measured the voltage, it gives out somewhere between 2.5 and 3 volts while it lasts. I guess if you made a bigger clockwork mechanism you could actually make some power. I mean, you're never going to make serious power, I don't think. But uh, I thought it was a really good bit of fun and I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.